Before we get into this episode, again, you'll notice that it's a review and a preview. Um, whilst this isn't the format that we really wanted to do, given how we, we tried to set things out at the start of the season, just time constraints and the actual time frames of the matches has meant that it's difficult to do it how we'd like to do. So if you're only interested in the review, that's the first 20 or so minutes, and then the preview begins for Birmingham around 21 or 22 minutes, and I can't remember the exact. Um, but we hope you enjoy as always, and I'll, I'll let myself take it away. Welcome back to another Terriers Talk podcast. Um, we, we're doing the same kind of style again of a preview and a review. We played Saturday, we play again Tuesday night. It's difficult to sit down and get two episodes out that it, we're probably going to cover the exact same things on to make sense to do in one episode. Um, given the fact we're, like we said last time as well, we're back, both back at uni, it means that pretty much filming is difficult for these kind of games. So makes more sense for us anyway to do one episode in a two we'll give you a time mark again as to where preview review starts and whatnot anyway i'll stop the waffling i wasn't there saturday so talk to us how was darren moore's first game in charge of Field town at the john smiths absolutely enthralling that is probably the sentiment shared between town fans and ipswich, ipswich fans alike couldn't say ipswich then like marcel will be elsewhere a few years ago Anyway, um, yeah, it was edge of edge of seat football. It, it was really, really, really good to watch. I mean, it was it was an impeccable advert for the Skybet Championship, and to say that Town um, were considerably lower down the table than Ipswich were, and still are, there was not really any time in the game where I thought there's a huge disparity between these two teams and I think that is something that we did say in the preview because although positionally the two teams are very very far apart it's early on in the season and although Ipswich do have undeniable class Tom are always going to put a fight um, up and I mean for an advert of Darren Moore football in the first showing at the John Smith Stadium no you know in front of 20, 20, 20,000 people rather it was a perfect one, and just summing it up, I think Town were really, really unlucky to not come out of the clash with all three points. Yeah, from the the very brief things that I've seen after the game, um, and in the days after, I've not seen anybody say that they're frustrated with it. I've not seen anybody, no. or if there have been frustrations, it's been that we haven't managed to keep a hold of a lead mm. or not score more, which is a complete flip side to what a lot of people thought oh, yeah. it was going to be, um, which is really, really impressive. Like, considering, again, he's he's been here a week at this point, so you've got that kind of aspect of how quickly can he implement his ideas, this, that, the other. The press conference of last week really impressed me, and this is something I'm... It's either a niche thing or you're going to love it. It's the fact that he asked players about their families, this, that, the other, and wanted to know them on a personal level, which managers will want to do anyway. But the fact that within the opening first four or five days of him being in the job, he's tried to learn everything he can about his players in very limited time and learn the little niche factors about the players, that just fills me with so much confidence. And we all knew how quickly or how much of a of a club man he was and like how much of a mm-hmm. good manager to have around for man management. Man manager, yeah, that, exactly. Like that already is brilliant and obviously as time goes on he's only going to get to know him better and hopefully draw more out of them as players so it's really it's really really promising and what was the kind of reaction like to his what was his reception at the at the ground it was really good because he came out and he knew it's whilst it's about him it's also not you know we've also got a football game yeah. to play and a contest to um kind of get embroiled in and he did come out kind of went up and down his touchline, clapped all the fans, and uh, after that, it was really onto the football. But what, what I did pick up on, and it's again, it's small niche things, like you just said, was town normally warm up uh, opposite the cow shed. So yeah. we, we warm up next to the big red stand. Now it's called, I, I call it Fantastic Media. Yes, yeah, um, Fantastic Media. We, we swapped. So that means... A, we warm up in front of the cow shed, and B, the opposition don't warm up in front of their team. Um, and secondly, second half, we were shooting towards the cow shed, which again means the opposition team 
don't shoot against uh, towards their fans second half. So it, you know it, it's all about small advantages. And people will say you know it's that's a load of rubbish. It's not going to work. But if a manager's come in and, and thought, how can we get a psychological advantage here? I'm all for it. And the first half was really, really, really promising from from town. And I know the first half against Coventry and what was Darren Moore's first game was quite substandard. In fact, very substandard. But we came out and we looked absolutely brilliant. Um again I'll just I'll just mention so line up Nichols obviously in net, um Pearson, Helic, Ruffles, Thomas, Redoni, Hog, Wiles, we all know that mid three uh, midfield three by now. Uh, and Utah, and then Bergzorg and Cromer up top, and I think every single person who started was really quite electrifying. I mean, Hog, a word for Hog, back to his best, absolutely yeah. incredible. He was here, there, everywhere, you know, brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Utah again, he's just one of those players who he works really well in tandem with Josh, uh, Josh Ruffles, rather, because we know they both can go forward, and if one's not forward, the other can, and they work really well, and especially movement off the ball as well to create space. I thought Utah was brilliant, and you know it, it shows how much he wants to be there when he did jump into the cow shed along with our, our Delano when he did score, and I just thought for a first half performance to to go into the sheds nil nil against you know a team that uh, that were I think at the time top of the league because obviously they were drawing last they played on the Sunday was really quite admirable, and actually Town had probably the better of the chances first half. Ipswich's keeper, again, I think him and Nichols, uh, um, you know, pardon me, I, I don't actually know his name. Um, he was absolutely incredible. And couldn't, it's credit to him. In, and I think is it a club decky or something? I'd like it, yeah. That's yeah, it, yeah. Like he, that. I mean, that's disrespectful because he was incredible. Him and Nichols, probably on form, two of the best goalkeepers or goalkeeping performances I've seen this season, uh, and definitely for a while. But people were saying as Town came into uh, the change rooms at half time that that was one of the best first half of football they've seen in a very very long while at the John Smith Stadium because we're not used to that. And I don't know how much you've seen, but and even from what you've heard, it was really really encouraging. And if we can kind of put a foot on the game in the first half and stamp some authority on the game against teams who are as high and fine as Ipswich, then that only means positivity going forward. Yeah, 100%. I think something that has been quite normal for Town in not even the past kind of season, but the past few seasons, we've normally been a side that'll have a good first or second half and then either we'll trail up or we'll warm exactly. up into the game. Yeah, It's either or, isn't it? Yeah. There's obviously been times where that hasn't been the rule of thumb and there's been times where it's just we've had a full-off game, this, that, the other. But the the general has been quite consistently we'll only be on it for one half. Or if we're not on it for all of the first half, we're on it for the second half of the first half and the second half. You know what I'm trying to get at? Yeah. To hear as many people say that throughout the game we were a threat, we looked really good, it's really promising to hear. And that's that's not me trying to be disrespectful to any previous managers, any previous players, any pre- anything like that. It's just nice hearing other fans say, Given expectations for the game, a lot of people thought Ipswich are probably going to to get the better side of this result. Um, to hear that Town were the side on top for the majority of the game, or from the perspectives I've heard, um, mm. albeit some maybe slightly biased this that the other, but to hear that is is very very promising to hear going forward. Um, and to do that against one of the better sides in the division so far, regardless of whether it's early in the season or not. If anything, it's probably going to be easier playing now than it would be oh, towards yeah. the end Absolutely. of the season because they're in still in twenty games time. Yeah, season. Yeah, so it makes it makes a lot of sense, and it's it's just very nice and refreshing to hear that that town mm. played well for a full ninety or so minutes with a lot of fight as well, may I add, because in teams I've seen before, and whether this is up to the manager or kind of the manager's influence or not is you know yet to come if if we put out you know loads of quite scrappy performances and you know really getting a foot in then that might be a Darren Moore thing but for now it was kind of a, a, a freestanding game but the the intensity and the, the want and the willingness to win the ball and 
take players on and stuff like that. I mean, Hogg was the epitome, the, the epitome of it. He was incredible. He just went through everyone with yeah. no kind of illegality at all about it. You know, I, I don't think he committed many fouls. I'm just trying to have a look here. I don't think he got booked. Uh, no, in fact, so. he didn't. No. Um, 35th minute, there was a qu- quite a big incident in the in the kind of the scheme of the game. And I think if, if you're an Ipswich fan, you, you you probably feel quite quite let down here because you've got Sorber Thomas and um, one of the Ipswich forwards. And Sorber is known for when he puts in a tackle, it can be quite rash. And let's just say on this occasion, it was a, it was an interesting tackle. And there... Uh, I'm not sure who it was. One of their front man goes down. Um, you know, you've got three thousand Ipswich fans behind the goal saying, "Please referee penalty." Everyone's kind of got the heart in the mouth, and penalties waved away. And what Silva does next is, if he's caught, you're thinking he's an absolute idiot. Yeah. If he's not, which he wasn't, you're thinking we can allow that. You know, it's a bit of um, bit of tomfoolery, a bit of bit of aggression there's a word which is probably everyone's thinking about but i can't say it on the podcast um yeah, a bit of housery yes bit of housery yeah um sober picks this guy up by his shirt <laughs> tries to uh tries to pick him up and say come on get on with it you know i think he drops a cheeky knee in his chest as well whilst he's on the floor and uh, let's just say Ipswich Town midfielder Wes Burns does not take a liking to what Sorba does and comes over and quite honestly grabs him and rags him about like a little doll. Um, and that just set the tone of the game from then on. Uh, I, th- I think it was Amari Hutchinson who, who, who went down because for, you know, 55 minutes he was getting absolutely abused by all, well, three and a half corners of the stadium. And... Uh, yeah, it, it was a really, really good contest. And again, to go in at nil nil was brilliant. I think it's testament to both keepers who kept both sides in the game. And uh it was switched town, changed it up. Um forty sixth minute. It must be half time. Yeah, it was half time actually. Uh Brandon Williams came on for Harry Clark and we all know what Williams is about. He's uh he's a cheeky player. He gets away with a lot drives the you know any team that he's playing for forward and is really good on the ball and um luckily for Ipswich he uh, turned out to be a, a good substitution and but not before Delano Bergs or absolutely rifles the ball into the bottom corner and makes himself uh, very popular with the cow shed and I'm, I'm sure you're a bit gutted because he literally celebrated where you would have stood yeah exactly nice he's he looks so good don't he 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 really does. Um, there's the, the the just that entire goal's nice. You yeah. as ball yeah. down the left hand side is nice. It's a really well way to pass. Bergzog drives at a defender. A few step overs. Shoots on his weak foot. Yeah, like thinking, it's yeah. it's a brilliant finish too. And I don't think many keepers in the division save that. It's a, it's a very good strike. Celebration is just as good, if not better. You um, turn like the cow say, shed as well. It's, it's a brilliant. Bit, it's a bit gutting, but you know, it's, they, we've <laughs> we've got an absolute gem there. And I, I was speaking to, to Jack earlier about this actually coincidentally. Mm. Um, town just have a habit of just finding random little gems out of nowhere, and I think this season it's Bergzog. You know, you look at past seasons. Vallejo was one that we mentioned. Oh. And the other was Carolighting. You've got two yeah. players there that. Before town, you've never heard of them, or you, if you, oh, yeah, I think you might have heard you. little bits about Iting due to him being at Ajax, but Ajax, yeah. you've probably never heard of them. Bergzog, I can't say before he tied for town, I'd, I'd ever heard of him. Sounds like an might, alien. I might have packed him on FIFA a few years ago, but that's, <laughs> that's, that's that's maybe the heights of it. Yeah, town have done really well, and that makes me very excited about how we are going to act going forward. Because if we're going to find a player like Bergzog, it kind of makes you go, hang on a minute. Who else can we find? A, how how are we gonna how have we found him? And B, how how have we then agreed a, a clause in him to buy, to have the option to buy him in the future? Mm-hmm. And then C, our scouting development must be very, very good. Our scouting department even must be very good if we're gonna look at some somewhere and find Delano Bergzog out of relatively nowhere. Nowhere. Mm-hmm. And he was he was exceptional. I think the only thing that 
people are still going to criticise him somewhat for, and it's understandable. He's just, it's just when he passes and what pass he does. Yeah. Oh, completely. Um, completely. Which obviously he's going to come with time, like we say. He's still, he's still new. Um, still needs to learn the teammates. Uh, this, that, the other. So while it's frustrating and whatnot, it's going to come with time, hopefully. Um, but that... he's, a, he's a very dangerous and exciting player, and it goes back to that saying of town need players that get people off their seats. Yeah, Delano Bergzog does that excellently. Yeah, and his display on Saturday was seventy five percent brilliant, and the rest was. There's a player in there, but he just needs to get his again final pass right. Yeah. It's very I'm similar to right. kind of the Ara situation, isn't it? Where there's yeah, oh, oh, so exciting. Completely. He's very, he's, he's very raw, raw, and um, he's a showman as well. You know, there's there's clips of him standing on the ball and you know step step overs and stuff like that. He reminds me of, and it's it's really weird me putting these two players together. But imagine a imagine a Colin Kwana and a Rajiv Van Lepara morph together. I think that is the type of player we're looking at here because. He's a number nine, but he's got the attributes of a seven, and it is it's really weird and it's it's very unorthodox to see like definitely in the modern game because I think if you are a number nine, you kind of don't have the capabilities of doing what a winger could do. I mean, one player who we've got who probably could do a bit of the same is, is Danny Walker because I know he's played on the wing um, quite a bit and stuff like that, but. It's nothing compared to Bergzog. I mean, he's he's a completely unknown quantity, and it is really exciting. I think, I think we said last episode that he will definitely kick on. Yeah, and, I've, uh, I've I've just got... I disagree with you somewhat there with him being a striker, to be honest, because he's, he, I, I, it's going to sound really weird, but just just stick with me on it. I'm sticking he's with kind you. Of, he's that midway point between a striker and a winger, where he's he's not either one of them because he's yeah, good enough. I, I, I don't really kind of know what he yeah. is, but. He but likes with, to ta- with time. Front. He'll be a very good striker, I think. Yeah, but then yeah, also definitely. the fact that he's got experience on the wing makes him just that more dynamic and that more confident mm. going forward. So it is a weird one, and I I still think that Town need to bring in another a striker, and I don't think anyone's going to come away Debate from Saturday that. and go that Bergzog's really really good. Don't need another striker now. That's not going to be the no, case at yeah, all. But I think to get the best out of Bergzog, you need to play a, a proper striker alongside him, mm. whether that's I think Ward would do very well with him. I, I can't lie. Yeah, That's possibly. Maybe me just hoping that Ward yeah. comes good again or whatnot. But I think Ward and our Harrett look, would do very well next to him. Or we go in the market in January and we say mm. we just need to find someone that complements him well. Yeah. Um, whether that be feeding him through or this, that, the other. Because going back to what I said about the scouting department, if you've got a, if you found Berg's org. And given how good he's been so far, I'm then more confident in the fact that we'll be able to find a striker that is of a similar suitable ability. as well. Yeah, um, yeah. And you know what? I mean, a world beater, but I'm confident that we can look at somebody and go, "Yeah, it, it'll be a, a good enough fit for us." Mm. And just just a final thing on Berg's on his goal, saying to my brother after the game, he did every, I think. He did what every Huddersfield Town fan would do if they scored in front of the cowshed, which yeah. is just jump in. And I, I absolutely loved it. And um, at, at that point, Town kind of looked on top. And it wasn't until roughly 10 minutes later where the cracks started to show, um, only slightly. But this is, this is a thing that I've seen, and I thought at the time, um, squad depth. These were three players who were taken off due to injuries, um, slight injuries. I think Uta and um, Uta and Hogg are, look okay for tomorrow. But yeah. Hogg came on for Reg. Sorry, Reg came on for Hogg. Uh, Hudlin came on for Karama, and Jackson came on for Uta. No issues with Jackson. Uh, looked okay. Hudlin and Reg did not look up to it at all. Um, Hudlin. Said even said on Instagram, really disappointed with my performance. And Reg looked completely flat footed, nothing, not not a scratch on Hoggy, unfortunately. And I think that's where Town were um, more suited to sitting back and kind of letting it switch come onto them. 
because Hog was breaking up everything and, and Red just he, he, he just could not kind of replicate that, which is a bit of a concern. I th- I think it's with Reg and Hog, you've got two very different players. Um, so the thing is, is Reg in, in that young bracket, even though I'd say he still is age wise, he's he's obviously not as, as young as he used to be. Stating the obvious, of course. But he's not kind of in that younger mould of just coming out of the academy players anymore. Um, and that's no criticism of him, but obviously it's kind of a case of he's played at a centre, as a centre-half pretty much his entire career. So trying to yeah. get him into a new role in the space of six months isn't really going to do too much for him. So it's kind of a case of do you then send him out on loan again or look to send him out on loan again to somewhere that will play him as a holding midfielder or do you just kind of go, right just keep him at centre half and obviously that's something that more will assess with time as, as it goes mm. on so it, it's one of them where I can see why the frustration's there but then at the same time it's kind of a case of well we've we've needed a, a hog replacement for some time and it's it's just a shame Kasumi was injured because I think he would have done I mean no disrespect to Reg but that is Kasumi, Kasumi's position so yeah. I think if we had David Kasumi we'd probably would have fared a bit better but again it's all if buts and maybes and that's who we had on the day so you know that that kind of became the case yeah it's 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 frustrating one but it it is what it is and then obviously i think if a a lot of that also won't be helped by the fact that we conceded if it was a one nil i think it'd be it'd be picked up on but it wouldn't be kind of a oh this question's still there well obviously it'll still be there but it won't be as prominent as a thing um, whereas because obviously we conceded, it's kind of like right, okay, we've we've conceded and we've only conceded when Hulk come off. So the obvious ping, the obvious finger to point, finger to point, yeah, yeah, he's got he's going to be there. But it's frustrating one. Um, Nichols makes a really really good save before that. Um, as is as is the normal with Lee Nichols now. Um, yeah. and then they score from across. That's kind of a bit of pink pinball in the box. Yeah, Brandon Williams heads it in, and it's it's one of them. It's it's cruel cruel football but it's meant that i'm two out of three predictions right in the past three weeks so yeah fair play no it's not it's, too, it's, it's very cruel but i think yeah. uh you take a point completely yeah, you know, top of the league it is it's a brilliant brilliant start to what looks to be an encouraging tenure yeah um under darren moore and i know it, that that's quite a, that's that's quite i said quite there that's quite easy to say after um two games but from what we've seen so far, I don't think anyone else can say, you know, otherwise. And again, yeah, really, really encouraging. And oh, you'd, you'd snap your hand off for a point, wouldn't you? Yeah, 100%. Um, like I say, I'm, I'm happy to get another score prediction, right? <laughs> um, but yeah, it's it's one of them where you kind of look at it before the game, you just go, a point would be very, very nice. Everyone knows what the hips which have. Um, and to look the better side for large parts of the game, which is what I've heard. Obviously, I'm, I'm going off. A lot of what people said, and then the very limited highlights that I've seen, um, it is positive signs. And looking forward to Birmingham, I'm. I don't want to say quietly confident, but I'm. I'm not I'm nervous optimistic. for that game. Yeah, I'm not nope. optimistic, which is, it's a really nice feeling. And obviously, it's like we say, it's early doors, but it, it's a very different feeling to what we had under Warnock. And that's not me saying on, in games under Warnock, I wasn't confident. I wasn't ever optimistic it's more a case of there's a lot longer vision as we've as we've said several times now about why not leaving and this that the other but there's a longer vision and it's making me very very excited to see where it goes after how we've been so far and it's making me look at Birmingham and go St Andrews is a tough tough place to go to but I'm I'm not looking at it and going I'm terrified of going there. I'm looking at oh it like, no We've got a chance in the game, which again, I, I don't want this to come across me being disrespectful to Warnock. I'm going, oh, if we never had a chance going to St Andrews under Warnock, we probably would have done as well. But it's it's more a case of the gradual feeling around the club at the moment is very, very good, albeit early doors. Yeah, no, completely. I mean, if you look at um, both sides form, Town uh, undefeated in five, Birmingham uh, winless in five, drawing two, losing three. Last win uh, came on the 26th of August, a uh, 2-1 win versus Plymouth. And they sit 12th in the table. So, as I said, and as you said, early doors, but form-wise, it's it's looking encouraging. But, you know, it's a championship, anything can happen. But I am, yeah, I am 
very optimistic, to be fair. Yeah, you go into that game, like I say, optimistic. It's it's nice to go into a, a game optimistic, as always. Um, Birmingham had a really good start, and for whatever yeah. reason, it's not, I don't want to say trailed off a bit, but it's trailed off a bit. Um, so it's kind of a case of you've got to go and try and get the most out of it while they're in a bit of a rough patch of form. Mm. Um, but then equally, you've got you've got to look at it again and go, they'll see it as a good opportunity. At Saint and like Saint Andrews is a very, very, very difficult place to go to on a good day. If you put it on a Tuesday night where there won't be too many travelling supporters, yeah. there there won't be as many home fans as it would be as a Saturday three o'clock. But they're still going to be supported well. So you look at it and you go, it's a tough, tough game, and you've then got to look at it and go, right. What is this town team about? Because you've had Monday night at Cov, you've kind of got oh, it's the first first manager bounce. Okay, you got your first home game. This is kind of a game where you go right. How are the squad? Where where are we actually at under Darren Moore? Because mm-hmm. then you've got a massive I, massive game at the weekend too. So it's kind of a yeah. case of does he change things? Does he rest players? I don't think you do. To be fair, I don't I don't think you can. But then also at the same time, I think you've you've got to look at Saturday and go. Well, but yeah, equally, this. I think I, I really think he'll want to get three points on the board before he goes back to his old stomping ground. Because yeah, I mean, let's let's be honest; those lot are completely for the taking, and the the whole atmosphere of that club is one of utter dejection right now. And you know, if if we could say right, let's make it a six point week uh, in the space yeah. of two games, yeah, it, it would be it. really ideal. But yeah, I mean, for for Birmingham and for Town. Kind of going down there tomorrow, uh, yeah, really optimistic, and hopefully we can, uh, you know, get Darren Moore is his, his first win as this town boss. Yeah, I just, I just like like we've both said so often so in in this episode, it's it's a lot of optimism, um, mm. and I think going back to how things were at the end of the Warnock tenure, it's kind of a bit like, how is it going to be? Who's it going to be taking over this, that, the other? Like there were so many questions about it, and so many like worries and. He's taken over Neil Warnock. How's things going to be? And yeah, he's he's done well so far. We look a good side. We look like a team that could be on top. And I'm again, I don't want to, don't want it to come across like I'm saying Warnock never did that because obviously, thing. But just just want to cover me back just in case that's how it comes across. Um, but I, I, it's really nice at the moment, and it's it's a very different feeling to one that you've had in the past. 12 months even you could probably even say a bit longer because even during the the playoff season there was a bit of a how good to be true is this this that the other but it, it's it's a very nice feeling and it feels like it could be built on um jay i'm gonna i'm gonna turn that yeah. turn that smile upside down that's not the same but yeah i'm going with it score prediction 2-1 tom nice 2-1 tom any yeah. any reasons behind that I think, as I said before, those lot are completely for the taking. Um, I I think we, I mean, we are by the law of averages conceding a goal, rough, uh, roughly a goal every single game. Um, but I do think Town will come out on top. I mean, fingers crossed, and I think it'll be a really, really perfect way to get us into a really, really tasty game on Saturday against Chef Wednesday. You keep going on about this game against Wednesday. We're not going to have a podcast <laughs> to do later this week if you keep going on. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I don't know. Part of me wants to say three one, and then part of me wants to say two nil town, and I I don't know yeah. which one I want to sit on, but I think I'm gonna go two nil. Okay. I just think getting a clean sheet and two goals. If in an ideal world, two well, obviously I was saying more than two goals in an ideal world, but you know what I'm yeah. trying to say. Yeah. Two nil clean sheet, good performance. That'd be the absolute perfect scenario going into Saturday. Um. It it'd be it'd be lovely, it'd be lovely, but obviously time will tell. Um, mm. And yeah, I, I don't think there's anything that we've that we've really missed. Nothing from me. I think we're both very excited about Saturday, though. <laughs> uh, I'm all right about Saturday. I'm I'm not too excited. It's, it's only a trip against you know, Sheffield Wednesday with Darren Moffat since his former club. <laughs> Anyways, I think that wraps us up. Um, so as always, thank you for for listening, watching. Um, it's always very much appreciated um, like, comment, share, subscribe as always, again, very appreciated 
and we shall see you probably Thursday, I want to say, to review Birmingham and our preview Sheffield Wednesday. So it's the three points um, and starting this week with a, with a, with a very good result.